Yeah, you got a bad head. What'd you expect? Anyway. These are just some thoughts that have been going through my mind. I'm gonna... Instead of making them to a specific thesis or some questions or... Anything where I'll have to put facts into them. I'm just gonna address them as... Something that's a question that anybody could discuss with me. You're free to post comments, send me messages, do whatever the fuck you want with what I'm about to say right now. Because honestly, these kind of things are coming through my head. I don't really know what to do with this information on my own. Like, well, have an idea on what I can use with it, but I don't think it should just be something I keep to myself. And I'm pretty sure some of you, some of you, have had similar thoughts go through your head. First off is the idea that I never really, I don't really know any or much concrete ideologies from before the Enlightenment, if you can call it that, I mean, it is pretty bloody, but, like, classical liberalism, fucking, what's his face, I mean, there's a, any Marxist thing, anything that came from that, and there's a lot, conservatism, really rose up from this. I don't really know much about ideology before that. Like, heavy ideology. I mean, there are some things, like, capitalism rose from the commercial revolution, and so we're, it's all about commerce and trade and how post-Renaissance and post, let's see, what was it? <clears throat> I hate being groggy and shit. I don't know, I'm just more tired nowadays. I mean, post-feudalism. They were all the dark ages, maybe. But hell, even classical antiquity. Around those times, those ancient times, I don't even know, like, any specific ideology set. Any set of ideas mixed together to form a social zeitgeist. I mean, there were classes, there was religion, I guess it kind of makes sense that people say that ideology is a new religion, because I don't really know any, I don't really know a lot of ideologies back in the times where People were more religious, and you can say maybe I wasn't looking, I'm not looking shit up very well. But if you think about all the stuff that it has become very ideology, very mixed with ideology, like capitalism, uh, socialism is a very old idea. It's been around since day one. So a lot of these different ideas, now they're fucking ideologies. Before they would be implemented through a religious zeitgeist, now they're not. Either that or a strict state organization of it. Like, and that's kind of weird. I mean, you get, I guess you can say maybe I should brush up on my French since. I'm only going to know a limited set of ideas with the English language. I guess if I studied a little more French, I could, like, pull out more, because they're, they're the philosophical, that's the philosophical language, where this is sort of the ideological one, you can say, and you'll need more philosophy to pick up on the other shit. I mean, think about how our language changes as our zeitgeist changes. Especially with the feminist movement. I hate what they did with the fucking English language. And 
I, I figure that's why I hate segregation in a way, because segregation created black America. It's We live in Western civilization. It's all essentially white America. Kind of like Eastern civilization is all Asian America. So if you like split the groups apart, yeah, it keeps... Uh, now they can compete amongst themselves and there isn't this issue of equality and that stupid crap and blind xenophobia and just a lot of market errors, a lot of social errors, destruction of patriarchy and things of that. But with segregation, even though it's better than most of them, essentially now you create black America. Now you create this strangest of, is the United States part of Western civilization, part of white civilization? Or is this duality? Is there this duality where it's black and white? If you think about it, the language game has changed a lot. There's black America, white America, corporate America, Latin America. I don't really want to be identified as a subset of America. I'd rather take the white American thing and say, hey, I had a role. I've dominated and helped out, essentially, the West. I played a role in this one concrete thing. And you can say the concreteness has been lost. And this is where my second question comes in. My first question is this. Has ideology changed since the Age of Enlightenment? Or has ideology come forth the way it is now from the Age of Enlightenment? Or has ideology always played a vast, strong role in society? And maybe I'm just not looking at my history as strongly as I should. And going forth into the topic of race, and this is something that I kind of knew for a while, but I'm starting to look at it a different way. Females. White females are usually given, they're not as like, hype. The you know bone structure, body structure, a lot of that stuff. It isn't as feminized as Asian females, but they have stuff like blonde hair, white skin, blue eyes, and a lot of recessive genes to help compensate for that and give them the illusion of being more feminized and essentially more female, which helps since. Not everyone is, not a lot of people are sadly attracted to girls that are as, like, black as charcoal. But, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's just another subjective thing. Because I know there's a lot of dark skinned girls, really dark skinned girls that I'd find attractive, actually. But, we generally favor whites, lighter skinned. It, these recessive genes and things of that nature. The Asians had the more feminized women in terms of body structure, bone structure, facial structure, and things that like that. Now, the Asians have the higher IQs, generally, but the whites they're still pretty high, yet they have the fucking, they have the ideology built within them. They have that western mode of thinking. And as Gandhi says, because keep in mind, back when fascism and Nazism and all these dictatorships were at their rise, a lot of the lefties were into them, ironically. The lefties that were hating on Hitler and Mussolini, saying that they're the voices of evil. Back in the days, these this was a sort of exception for them. This was like, oh, no, these guys are, like, violent, but they're 
But there's something I like about them. Because they implemented some of the leftist ideologies and mix and turn them to something new. That's what Nazism is. That's what fascism is. Gandhi himself admitted, okay, you know, the same guy that says an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. He said that, well, you know what? Even though they have engaged in killing people and stuff like that, guess what? The West is inherently very violent. This is an Eastern thinker. So he's like, you know, West revolves, it drives on violence. So, you know, I can support what they do. They, These guys are very helpful for the poor. They're very good for all these other guys. So now that I'm thinking about it, they have that ideology set. And that's kind of what helps them compete. And ultimately, this is my question. And this is probably a better question than question number one. Does white society... This the West, this the white race itself exists so that the East or the Asian race not destroy everyone else, like the Browns and the Blacks, like the brownie guys like me, essentially. Is that why they exist? Are they essentially trying to a force that exists to stop the monopoly? And essentially looking ahead, looking forward, there's some stuff that we should take into account besides this. Now this is an off the chart series of questions, but besides looking at the nature of ideology and race, I've also essentially looked at essentially essentially how I haven't really fucking changed in these videos at least I thought I didn't change but I look think about it I look really really fucking different from when I was what 16 look at my video response to secular numinous is in peril it's just in my channel type secular numinous is in peril the way I speak back then the way I speak now isn't that different but you can tell in terms of my looks and the way I think and act yeah I'm way different so what do you think has changed and what do you think stay the same I think in terms of the way I can jump into various tangents and have random speech impediments when I make these fucking videos and my rambling style hasn't changed my ability to say disgusting things and some fucked up things hasn't changed it's sort of how I look a little bit and my fucking some parts of my fucked up personality have changed like I seem like more like I was trying to dominate people in a way like in terms of extortion, I was trying to extort people. Where now that I'm, now I'm, I just like less PC. I just say whatever fucked up shit comes to my mind. It's not about that in terms of being fucked up. But still, a lot has changed and not a lot has changed. No. Um, how did I change? Does white does white race exist so that the Asian race so that Asian race has something to compete with and not dominate all the other races? And ultimately, does this is this is a question I'm gonna like reduce a little? Has ideology come from the or derived off the age of enlightenment, or has ideology always played a strong role, and as strong of a role as it does now? All right, so feel free to answer my questions and shit. I don't really give a 